Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Irvin's Enchanted Tiki Land. We weren't able to go on an adventure this weekend, so we decided to maybe bring the adventure home a little bit. Uh, like we said before, this is Irvin's Enchanted Tiki Land, our home base of operation. Um, but we thought, hey, it might be fun to uh, give a little bit of tiki history and talk a little bit about uh, tiki cocktails and show off uh, the stuff that we got in the mail this week that's kitsch related. So first things first, Irvin's Enchanted Tiki Land. Abby, could you tell the people at home who exactly was Irvin and who is this bar named after? Irvin was my grandpa on my dad's side and he had this infectious, adventurous spirit, very cheeky, and uh, he loved like good spirited pranks. But when we decorated and got everything for this room, it just seemed fitting to honor his memory by naming our fun cheeky place after him. But we did do some Amazon kitsch hunting and uh, we got some, some pretty cool things uh, this week. Uh, so if you'd like to start off. Sure. Yes. All right, first things first, little thing. Uh, <laughs> we got a bottle opener. That is, uh, it says Hawaii on it and it's a tiki. And you put the beer bottle right into the mouth of the tiki and he opens it up for you. He's got magnets on the back to catch the beer cap when you pop it off. It is just, that's just fun. That's fun. I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a closer up of that though. I'm, I'm sure you can't see it from there. Another thing we got, well, we got two of them, is this honey, and again, we'll do a, a close up, but it's a macadamia nut tree flower honey from Honolulu, all organic, and it comes in this really cool little, little tiki bottle. And I just looked at the bottle, and to be honest, I thought it was a bear because it always comes in a bear. But a little extra surprise that it little, was a tiki. Yes, and <laughs> and it has a keister. It's got a butt. It's got a butt. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> and it's delicious. Yeah, uh, we actually we blended that up with a little pineapple the other night and uh, put that in one of our drinks, and it was absolutely delicious. Now the third thing that we got this week is related to this. Uh, you've probably seen these mugs before. These are the Archie McPhee Tiki Mugs. You get a set of four, they come in four colors. They've been making these for almost 20 years, I think. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, they're, they're great. We have two sets of them. Um, very kitschy, a, good, a great example of a modern kitsch item. Uh, but we discovered that there's a new version of them out that we absolutely had to get. So we got... Dun, 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 dun. Cat Tiki Mugs. And uh, we thought it might be fun to uh, unbox them here. The packaging is amazing. It's got <laughs> these, these dancing cat tiki mugs <laughs> on the back. I kind of, I really want to cut that out and just hang it in here mm -hmm. because that, that's amazing. Yeah, put it right. Uh, there's plenty of wall space. We'll find a home for it. If they've, it. they've named the cats. <laughs> they are Spike with a Y. Bella, Ruby, and Max. Mm. <laughs> and up in the corner is a uh, it is a certified crazy cat lady product. All right, so let's open them up. Right. Not much of an unboxing because you can see them right from the front, but uh, hey, it still counts, I'd say. Unboxing, that's what all the kids are doing nowadays. They're nice. I mean, they're cute. They're kitschy. They're they're double sided, so. Yeah, it's that's fine. Nice. Yeah. It says that they're eight ounces. Um, I feel like they might be a little bigger than that. Um, size comparison wise, they're a little bit bigger than the uh, the previous mug set. Um, a little taller and uh, about the same size around, I'd say. And uh, on the bottom they say uh, Archie McPhee, copyright 2016. And the last thing that we got this week is not from Amazon. I, I wish you could get this from Amazon. Uh, but uh, I stopped for some beer on the way home Friday night at a uh, local place. You mix and match your own cans and bottles. And I just had to get this. This is Evil Twin Brewing Tropical Itch. Look at that can. It's got tiki's on it. It's got mid-century modern starbursts. I, I mean, come on. I How was I supposed to pass that up? I have high hopes for this beer. Yeah. Uh, so this is a uh, Berliner style Weiss beer uh, with passion fruit. All right, let's crack her open. We're gonna break out our little little wine glasses. 
We got these from the Silver Strike Winery in Tombstone, Arizona, which is a phenomenal place to go. Oh, yeah. We dressed in Victorian clothes the whole weekend. We met like half the town. It's a phenomenal place. So much fun. Cannot wait to go back. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever will we do? <laughs> when you have a home bar and a lot of animals, everything has to be machine washable. Smell the passion fruit. Oh yeah, that is passion fruit. All right, mahalo. Very tart. Wow, that is not. Mm. I was expecting much sweeter. That's almost like a like a gozer, a, a gozer beer. It's a gozer. Beer. It's a gozer beer. It is. You know what? This is actually more of a. You know, it doesn't say sour beer on here. It just says, yeah, it just says wheat beer with passion fruit. But this is definitely this is a sour. Um, if you like if you like sours, you like gozes, uh, you'll probably like this one. Very tart. Did you say tart or would you even just sour? Like, like a mouthful of lemon sweet tarts. Yeah. So that was Tropical Itch from the Evil Brewing Company, Evil Twin Brewing Company uh, from uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, if you like sour beers and uh, you like tiki, check them out. Uh, I think we're going to keep the can at least. It's just too cool. Looking. And now for the history portion of tonight's program. Take it away, Abby. Okay, well that just sounded stuffy. <laughs> so most of you are familiar with the classic tiki drinks. The Mai Tai, the Scorpion Bowl, the Volcano, the Fog Cutter, the Port au Prince. Zombie. Dr. Funk. And the much disputed Singapore Sling. And we'll get to all of those in future episodes. But for now, we need to go back to the beginning. To the birth of the cocktail. Picture yourself in the British Navy in 1740. What are you doing? What, it, uh, uh, visual aids, they, so they can picture it. I like it. Okay, yeah. so it's 1740 and you're in the British Navy and you get a ration of rum each day. Arr, rum. Arr. And the water that you drank was pretty horrible. And in the mid 1700s, the ration of rum was actually cut back, so the sailors were not happy about that. And we're going to be in need, we all. And then British Vice Admiral Edward Vernon, on August 21st, 1740, said to his sailors in the West Indies, "What you're going to do is you're going to take your ration of rum and you're going to mix it with water." And the sailors said, "No, the water's disgusting." So we're not going to do that. He's like, no, you're going to add in lime and sugar to make it taste better. Lime and sugar? Blimey, what an idea. And that became known as Old Grogum or Old Grog or Grog. And then would later become Navy Grog on all the tiki bar menus of the 50s and 60s. So we are actually going to make the original Grog. Now, we don't have any nasty brackish water because um i guess we could find a puddle outside I could go to the backyard i mean yeah possibly so it's uh it's really simple it is it is water this is just regular tap water clean clean water. clean wine something they didn't have <laughs> lime and sugar and rum and for this we are using actually Hussier's British Navy Rum, and they were the official British Naval Rum up until 1970. 1970? 1970. There, wait, are you telling me that there was still an official Navy Rum of the, until the 19, until the until 70s? Until July 31st, 1970. Oh my gosh. And uh, this Wait, is, the sailors didn't get like rations of rum up through like 1970. Yes. They did. That's, yes. Oh man. Yes. According to the, <laughs> According the, the bottle. bottle. Okay. So, and this is actually from, this is uh, West Indies rum. So, mm. this is kind of true to the, although I'm sure the quality of the rum in 1740 was oh, probably, so yeah, a little sketch. So, they don't give any exact measurements for this, so we're just going to wing it. So, All right. 
All right, so tell me when. I think that's good. Oh, oh, uh, when. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you will align. Of course. Align. The nice thing about this is that now we won't get scurvy. Oh, come on, you were the, the master cocktail maker. Uh, yeah, well, I have a wide squeezer typically for that. I don't do it with my hands. <laughs> well, mate, do you like this okay. sailor We're stick. doing this authentic. Okay. And for the sugar, yeah. we're using like all natural, organic, evaporated cane. All right, get those. <laughs> Here we go. Alright. Okay. Alright, so original British Navy grog. Cheers. Mmm. Great. Mm. Not bad. It's like an alcoholic limeade. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Very, very palatable. Much more palatable than the the beer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sad to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see this cocktail thing catching on. Mm -hmm. After Navy Grog became, or just Grog, I guess, really, uh, became popular, became known among the Navy, it actually spread to society. And they started making punches that had limes in it and uh, various other drinks like, uh, is it, there's a like Bulu and Bombo. Bombo. Bombo and uh, Calabogus and, and things like that. Um, during colonial times, which were a co uh, combinations of rum and sugar and limes. And then sometimes they would have other things in them, like ginger beer, or uh, maybe some other uh, ingredients that would have been locally available. But that core triplicate of rum, lime, and sugar formed the basis of all the cocktails going forward throughout history. So I think that just about wraps it up uh, for us here at Irvin's Enchanted Tiki Land. Uh, thanks for watching and spending the afternoon with us here. So we'd like to hear from you guys. What do you like to collect? What are you into? And also, I mean, where should we go next? Let us know in the comments or visit us on our Facebook page. And uh, please, it's obligatory, but uh, we have to say it. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, don't miss an update from us. Uh, that would be uh, that'd be really great. It, we'd really appreciate it. And until next time, no matter what happens, just roll with it.